You are listening to Radio Maria Canada, a Catholic voice wherever you are. We now present the program Beyond the Pages with our host, Christina Doyle. everyone and welcome to Beyond the Pages. I'm your host Christina Doyle. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Today we have a special treat. Today we have three amazing guests who are going to share their testimony. They're going to share some really valuable information for all of us Catholics who need to hear this beautiful uh, information that we have for you today. First I want to ask you one simple question. What do these rosary beads, these beautiful rosary beads, and this gentleman here this gentleman here. Now, what do you think they have in common? Well, before we start, I will tell you that these lovely people I've known, at least I know uh, Sister Mia, I've known her for quite a while, and we've got some other guests as well. So let me first introduce to you, I'll begin with Mia, Mia Watamina, who is also uh, a dear friend of mine and also is a, a member of St. Mary Immaculate Catholic Church here in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada. And we welcome you, Sister Mia. It's good to have you on board. Oh, hello, Sister Christina. And hello, everyone. It's nice not- to be with you today. Yes, absolutely. Then we have Brother Vincent Yuson. Yusan, I actually got his name right. For I always call him Brother Vincent, so I finally got his name correct. Brother Vincent, welcome. Thank you, sister. Uh, it's a good uh, opportunity to be in Radio Maria. Thank you for having us. We're so delighted. And not least, not last, but not and not least, but Sister Nadine Dagger. Welcome, Sister Nadine. Thank you, Sister Christina. It's an honor to be here. We're so happy to have all three of you here. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to hear is you're going to hear some information uh, regarding a beautiful organization that can that usually is, works right out of uh, every Catholic church, if they have. And uh, you might want to have more information about this beautiful organization. And, and guess what? It's free. It doesn't cost money. So you're not going to have to be worried about being plagued uh, plagued by money and anything. But they will ask you to have a heart from Blessed Mother. And that's all they're asking. So today uh, we're going to be sharing uh, some information from Brother Vincent and and Sister Nadine. And Sister Mia is going to complete our show today with a a wonderful, most heart a wrenching uh, testimony that I'm sure all our listeners are going to truly uh, enjoy and appreciate uh, the depths of all of our members' faiths today. So thank you so much. God bless you all as we begin. And so I would invite now Brother Vincent to open up with a prayer for us. All together, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. God, our Father, pour out the gifts of your Holy Spirit on the world. You sent the Spirit on your church to begin the teaching of the gospel. Now let the Spirit continue to work in the world through the hearts of all who believe. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You, O Lord, will open my lips, and my tongue shall announce thy praise. In time unto my aid, O God, O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Vincent. That was beautiful. And uh, that is a very special prayer, everyone. And we'll get into that in a second. First of all, let me tell you that all of these lovely people belong to the Legion of Mary. Maybe in your parish, you have the Legion of Mary. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you've read it in the bulletin, but you've never really, really didn't know much about it. And yet, maybe even in your parish, you might not have the Legion of Mary. Well, here, my dear brothers and sisters, is an opportunity to hear what is the Legion of Mary? What do I do? What do I have to do to become a legionnaire? What does it involve? And why should I even become a legionnaire? So brothers and sisters, Today is a really important day, and I pray that you invite your family and friends to listen in on this because it is such, it, it, it's sometimes it, I find it a little bewildering at times that there isn't a Legion of Mary in every Catholic church. That's my gut feeling. But anyways, with that in mind, let's begin with Sister Nadine. And Sister Nadine, can you tell me, tell all of our listeners then, what is, what is the Legion of Mary? Thank you, Sister Christina. So the Legion of Mary is a Catholic association of lay volunteers based in different parishes. It was founded in Dublin, Ireland in 1921 by the servant of God, Frank Duff. That's the picture that you showed earlier. Nice. And it was endorsed by seven popes and by the Second Vatican Council. It came to Toronto in 1934, and it is currently present in over 170 countries. Uh, members of the Legion of Mary become instruments of the Holy Spirit through a balanced program of prayer and service. So we meet weekly for prayer, for the study of the faith, Catholic literature, and for planning and reporting apostolic work for, for that week. We also um, report uh, during the meeting, what works we had done in the week prior. We follow a very structured system, one that has been proven to withstand the test of time. In fact, just last year, we celebrated the Legion of Mary's 100-year anniversary, and it was a truly a time of joy and a time of thanksgiving. Um, some of the works that we do include door-to-door -door evangelization, um, parishioner visitations, the visitation of the sick and the elderly, um, religious education, visiting new baptized and first Holy Communion families, um, visiting the imprisoned, pilgrim virgin statue rotation. So we take Mother Mary to different homes. We, um, we come within a group of uh, legionaries, one, uh, two or more people, and we'll do prayers with that family. And we'll leave Mother Mary there for them for two weeks where, where they will do daily prayers. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we come back after the two weeks and we do more prayers with the family and we take Mother Mary to the next home. Um, you know, Sister Nadine, when we think back to Pope Francis, talked about works of mercy, mm -hmm. works of charity. And that's what this sounds like, does it not? That's right. It's actually very, very beautiful when we're there. It's it, You can feel the Holy Spirit present. You can feel Mother Mary present. And mm -hmm. people are left in tears sometimes. And sometimes we take her to people who are not even Catholic. They ask us, they call and they ask to bring Mother Mary to their home because they have this love and devotion for her without even being Catholic. So some of the homes we go to are people who don't practice our faith. But you plant that seed That's and right. we leave that there for them. It's a beautiful thing. And they ask us to come back time and time again. So beautiful. And as I say, uh, everyone, you know, it, this is not a, a typical program, usually from beyond the pages when I've interviewed writers and their books. But this book, Legio Maria, uh, Legio Maria, as you can see, uh, that was inspired by uh, the founder, Frank Duff from Ireland, from Dublin, Ireland, who uh, had a, a true devotion to our Blessed Mother and inspired the, this, this, um, this wonderful handbook that we use in our meetings. And uh, it's, it's for the love of Mary. It's yes. as simple as that, isn't it, Sister Nadine? It's for the love of Mary. 
All right. Well, that's, absolutely. Yeah. She loved her before us. That's right. She loved us before we loved her. Absolutely. Thank you, Sister Nadine. Now, Brother Vincent, so that you don't feel left out. <laughs> Still here, sister. So now I'm going to ask you then, what is, what is a legionary? Yes, sister, you know, good afternoon again. Good morning to all your listeners. And thank you again for the opportunity. Uh, I would like to answer that question by mentioning a few traits that make a person uh, a legionary. Uh, so to start, a legionary is a practicing Catholic who is devoted to our Blessed Mother. Someone who wants to work for her and a little bit more each day uh, strives to become a living copy of Mary. So uh, why copy Mary? Uh, you may ask. Well, of all creation, there's no other person who loves Jesus more than Mary. Jesus taught us that he is present on earth in the poor, the elderly, the sick, the homeless, the imprisoned, and all the people forgotten by our society. So when the legionary goes out to the community to serve them, it's as if Jesus is being served once again by Mary. And a legionary is a, a volunteer in the parish. He allow, if he follows the direction of the priest on what action is most needed in the parish. Every parish is unique, so the legionary stays ready. So when a priest needs instructors for baptism and confirmation, you know, he signs up. And when the priest uh, needs help to bring Holy Communion to the homebound, you know, hands up. Uh, and when a priest asks for someone uh, who can help to enthrone the sacred heart of Jesus in a home, uh, he signs up as well. Always ready. And uh, a legionary has a shorter dictionary than most people because he doesn't have failure in his vocabulary. A bump in the road is just a postponed success. Uh, he's content in working without um, expecting instant results. Well, of course, if God says, says yes right away, he won't complain, right? Thank you, God. Uh, that's instant. But uh, if it's the answer is a little bit different or it's a bit delayed, he won't be discouraged. Yeah, there is that uh, kind of understanding. Uh, there is enough faith that uh, it keeps him motivated. You know, Brother, <laughs> Brother Vincent, it's so wonderful to hear your, your comments today. It's very encouraging for all our listeners. So many times we're faced with so many challenges in life and uh, we get discouraged so easily. It doesn't take us much. It could be just something in the kitchen that goes wrong or, you know, and, and we get frustrated. And, and yet being a legionnaire is, as you're pointing out to us, is, is taking, taking life's challenges as they come, but yes. understanding that we have the presence of our Holy Mother through it all, that she knows what we're going through, that she's there with us through it all, and mm -hmm. that we can draw strength from her and peace from her. And that genuine, un, that, that uh, supernatural understanding that our Blessed Mother is, is alive in our lives all the time. All yeah. we have to do is invite her. And again, you know, as Sister Nadine was talking about, you know, the works of mercy of, of doing that. And, and also that sometimes you're right, Brother Vincent, not always someone is going to be receptive, right, yes. to, our, to our encouragement, to our love of Mary, that some people might shun us. But as you said, that's not how we're, we're not to feel discouraged. We're to say, great, even more reason why we need to keep on keeping on, right? Agree, yes, sister. Absolutely. Did you have anything further that you wanted to add uh, on yeah. that? Yeah, I recall a few more traits of a legionary. Uh, one of them is that a legionary is a spiritual warrior. Yeah, yeah someone who promised a faithful service to the Holy Spirit. You may recall uh, that's uh, one of the highlights of being uh, accepted into the Legion of Mary when you do that promise. So. He knows he needs to use the tactics of heaven in the spiritual battle for souls. He uses uh, humility, he uses kindness, he uses a welcoming smile. You know, and, um, and I never underestimate the power of a warm smile and asking nicely. That's right. And also, yeah, of uh, prayer and fasting for those that do special intentions. So um, just to close that question, you could imagine a, a random setting and you see a group of people. It's easy to spot which one is the legionary. 
is the, that what that person who is uh, talking to everybody and initiating conversations and um, somewhere along the way he will find an opportunity to uh, give a rosary or a, a scapular or a prayer leaflet he always carries a few in his pocket right yeah he always likes to spread uh, anything catholic so um, he lives and breeds uh, to make people think more of god that's beautiful now if any of our guests, Sister Nadine and Sister Mia, if you can recall an incident where <clears throat> there was an opportunity for you to, to you know, just during your daily lives and uh, an opportunity for you to give uh, a sacred medal, a miraculous medal or something that that was someone that was a complete stranger. And that takes, uh, you know, somebody might say, well, I'm scared. I wouldn't talk to strangers. Oh, I wouldn't do that. But, you know, we as legionnaires, we go with prayer first, right? We ask our Blessed Mother to be with us, uh, St. Michael the Archangel to protect us and to defend us. And away we go out into the world and to do what Mary would, what Mary is asking all of us to do is to spread the gospel, spread the love of her. Uh, and of course, we know uh, loving her means loving Jesus. The closer we are to our Blessed Mother, the more the closer we are to Jesus. So does anyone want to jump in? Does anyone can recall Sister Nadine? I am. Um, uh, yeah, I have an experience where I, I always carry rosaries with me. That's one way I, I evangelize. And I give them to people like in lineups at the store, anything grocery store. I love lineups, by the way. It's like the perfect time to talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember um, one time this woman that I really look up to in, in the church, in the Catholic faith, I've always been inspired by her, by her devotion to God, her devotion to Mother Mary, her love for the Catholic faith. And she passed away. But before she passed away, she gave me a rosary. And I really loved that rosary. I just would hold it and I'd keep it on me all the time. And I remember one time I went to the store and I didn't have any of those rosaries that I always give away. But I had this one rosary that this lady gave me. And there was a woman in one of the aisles and something just kept pushing me to like, go talk to her, go talk to her. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And it was like telling me to give her the rosary. And I kept putting my hand in my pocket and I'd feel rosary and I'm like no that's my rosary like I, I there was something inside me that was very selfish like I just wanted to hold on to it and, and you know it's a material thing it should I shouldn't have felt that way about it but it was just that connection to the person who gave it to me and I just wanted to hold on to it but something kept pushing me go to her go to her go to her finally I just gave in and I I'm so glad that I did because I would have regretted it so much had I left the store not doing that but I went up to the lady and I said, hi, I'm like, I'm sorry to bother you. She actually works there. She was like setting up some stuff. I'm like, I'm sorry to bother you, but something's pushing me to come and say hi to you. And I really want to give you this. And I opened my hand and the rosary was in it. And she just looks at me. She looked at, I thought she was going to punch me at first, but <laughs> she just looked at me with like shock. And I, and I didn't know what was going to come out of her, but she was like, and then she just started bawling. And she's like, I was just diagnosed with cancer. I don't have much family. I don't have much friends. I, I don't have a strong faith and I don't have a strong faith. I don't have a strong belief in God, but I did pray. And I asked him to give me a sign that he was real and that I wasn't alone. And I, I prayed so hard for this. And I don't know why I prayed because I never pray. And then you come out of nowhere and you give me this. And I was like, oh my goodness, I was sitting there holding on to this material thing when I, when God was trying to tell me, go help someone, go be selfless. And just the look in her face. And she asked me if she could give me a hug. And I, I started to cry with her. Like we just held each other and we said a prayer. And it was like one of the most like beautiful things that I had felt like it was just such a beautiful feeling to be able to do that for someone, to give her that reassurance that God loves her that she's not alone, even if, she, if even if there's no people around her, she still has God and she still has Mother Mary. We had like a little spiritual talk and it was just a beautiful moment. That's so beautiful. I mean, those of us, uh, our listeners that you're listening today must be truly inspired by these three beautiful people. Uh, Sister Nadine, what role do you have in the Legion of Mary? 
I am the president of the Legion of Mary at St. Mary Immaculate. So each parish has its own four officers. Each parish that has the Legion of Mary is considered a presidium, and each presidium has its officers. And in our presidium, I'm the president. Mia is uh, the vice president. Vincent is the um, secretary, and you are our new member. <laughs> I just made their promise recently. <laughs> I'm a little biased. Okay? <laughs> Great to be but, with you. Uh, well, thank you, Sister Nadine, and thank you, everyone. Again, you know, it's it's been, ladies and gentlemen, it's been something I've been wanting to have these three lovely people in our in our midst today to share with you here on Radio Maria Canada and uh, Radio Maria Canada and uh, our dear uh, Alex Diaz, our program manager has been so flexible in welcoming all the different things that I've done on Radio Maria and having the opportunity to share with you the Legion of Mary today seemed so right and so important that I'm, I'm afraid that it's been overlooked for so long and maybe too, I would say even too long. And uh, I think that having this program today is giving us, all of us, um, a, a revitalization in our own faith and, and relieving. You know, we know that we look around the world and we're troubled, but through the Legion of Mary, brothers and sisters that are listening, you know, there is such strength drawn from each other. We pray together as a group. It's it's the most genuine, heartfelt, most sincere time you will ever experience in your life. And you will want it. When I will just sit, share quickly, be, before I became a Legion of Mary, I really balked <laughs> at the Legion of Mary because one of the things they encourage, uh, you know, that you should be doing as an active member is attend a weekly meeting. And I, as a retired teacher, and I was in special education that involved from kindergarten to grade eight. So I was involved in the primary, junior, intermediate meetings. So I was meeting to death. And so having another meeting in my mind was like, what are you? No, there's no way I'm going to join something that has a meeting every day. My whole life has been meetings. And, but I will tell you, after that very first meeting of being together, praying together, listening to one another, reading our, our handbook and studying it and learning about it further and deepening our faith in our Blessed Mother, I cannot tell you that I don't want to miss, un, I, I don't care what you want to call it, but I don't want to miss another meeting. I'm so fed by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, to come together with everyone. And it is such a blessing. They are all, just that you hear the, the Sister Nadine's amazing little, just something off the cuff. There she is, minding her own business, waiting in line to pay for groceries and look. And there are countless stories like this, brothers and sisters that are listening. There are countless stories of these same situations that you think are by accident. But I know and you know that nothing is by accident in this world, that everything has a reason and a purpose. So we are all together here to serve our Blessed Mother. And of course, no better place than to talk about the Legion of Mary than on Radio Maria. <laughs> You couldn't find a better fit to me. So thank you, Sister Nadine. Now, let's get to um, uh, Sister Nadine. You were talking about what is the purpose then? What is the purpose of the Legion of Mary? So the main purpose of the Legion of Mary is to give glory to God through the sanctification of its members. Um, the primary reason for the system is, to, is its function in uh, sanctifying us and giving us holy discipline, which helps us grow in faith through consistent prayer and study, which is what is important about the weekly, I like to call it gathering. I think we spoke about this in one of our meetings or uh, one of our gatherings, because it feels more like a gathering than a meeting to all of us. And we all feel, feel so inspired by each other and so motivated by each other. We push each other, we help each other grow in our faith and I think that gives us the most beautiful reward. 
um, through consistency, we will establish better prayer habits and the habit of virtue. So the Legion of Mary, as Brother Vincent said earlier, is um, an extension of the heart and hands of the pastor by doing God's work. So the Legion of Mary also strives to reach out to non-Catholics or lapsed Catholics and offer them the faith to help them bring to help bring them closer to God, one family at a time, one home at a time, one parish at a time. Um, the Legion of Mary also provides great support for new Catholics, especially from RCIA or RCIC, to help them grow in faith. As legionaries, we also strive to serve Jesus, who is very present in the forgotten and in the most vulnerable members of society, and to do so through the heart of Mary. I think that lady that I met was an example of that, or she felt like she was forgotten, but somehow God wanted her to know that she was loved and she wasn't forgotten and she'll never be forgotten. Even if people here have forgotten her, he never did. So it was a way, it's a way to reach out to each other and to help each other through our faith. Thank you, Sister Nadine. Now, Brother Vincent, can I over to you? Um, how did then, in, in a, because we want to keep mindful of time here of recording uh, that we're on today, um, how did the Legion of Mary even get started? How did this, how did this begin? Um, the Legion of Mary started with the very humble beginnings. Uh, for sure, the original members didn't really think that um, they would grow into a worldwide organization right away. Um, almost everything was borrowed from the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, the, so with a borrowed room and even borrowed the opening prayers, um, the, the first Legion of Mary was held on September 7, 1921 in Dublin, Ireland. Yes, you heard that right. It's 101 years old. Uh, so wow. they gathered around uh, September 7. That's the eve of Our Lady's birthday, right? The pioneers were 15 women, a priest named uh, Father Toher, and the founder himself, a layman. Uh, named Frank Duff. So the servant of God, Frank Duff, was around uh, 32 years old at that time, already a government worker and uh, already a member of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul for around eight years. And it was there, though, uh, through the works of the SSVP, that he saw a need within a need. Uh, so while providing material relief, uh, he saw that there was much deeper spiritual need in the people they served. So there came an idea on how to put faith into action. Uh, so going back to the meeting, uh, the members decided they would study the treatise on the true devotion to the Blessed Virgin by uh, St. Louis Marie de Montfort. It's a beautiful work and spirituality that is still making saints until today. Uh, this uh, Pope Pius, St. Pope Pius X and St. Pope John Paul II, uh, they follow this uh, spirituality. Yeah. And the members uh, agreed that they would go to work. Uh, so just to give you a glimpse, uh, the, the phrase, to Jesus through Mary, it appeared so much in that book. It's all over that book. And uh, they put this into action. And there was a hospital nearby, and they pledged, they pledged to, to go there weekly uh, to establish friendships. And uh, bed to bed, yeah, the patient can be cheerful or grumpy. Uh, the patients will be visited. Uh, they will gain new friends for sure. And they were even more willing to listen than to speak. So if, because um, um, this is the, the cancer ward. So just imagine at that time, and there was not much options available for, for treatment and uh, People were really down in spirit, and that was the purpose. That was their main motivation. We would go to them. We would cheer them up. We would bring a, a welcoming smile, even for a few hours of the week. And uh, they named their group at that time Association of Our Lady of Mercy. And uh, four years later, they, they renamed their organization, the Legion of Mary. Uh, so that's around 1925. So that became the template, you know, gathered to pray study, report, and plan the apostolic works, and go out to the community in pairs, uh, one praying, one working, and um, from one presidium to around, um, say around 600,000 today, uh, that's how it all began. Wow. 
That's amazing. Um, unbelievable. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Vincent. Let's just go quickly. Uh, just give quickly your um, reasons, like how, how, like how is how has the Legion of Mary impacted your life per se for yourselves? So beginning with Sister, actually might, might as well begin with Brother Vincent, and then we'll go to Sister Nadine. But Brother Vincent, how being in the Legion of Mary it has impacted your life? Um. I, I truly believe that uh, we are all on a journey of faith. In, in a recent gospel, uh, even the apostles asked Jesus to increase our faith. And the Legion, of Harry, the Legion of Mary helps me so much in taking further steps towards spiritual growth. In the weekly meetings, I get tremendous encouragement from my fellow legionaries. Uh, there's power in praying together and studying the faith together. And uh, our spiritual director and assistant of the parish uh, guides our learning and directs the apostolic works that we do for the parish. So um, we learn ways to put the gifts of the Holy Spirit into work, into action, in, in the real world, you know. Uh, and in the Legion, uh, I encountered so many people who would never guess were suffering or have gone through tremendous suffering. They stay joyful and are willing to share how and why. So uh, seeing suffering in a way of uh, Jesus, uh, in sharing Jesus' own cross, uh, in a way. So that's the, that's how they usually start. So what an honor, right? It's a great yes. honor. It helps me complain less, <laughs> appreciate blessings more, and uh, both big and small. And it prepares you to to recognize uh, temptation or some the negative things that come your way. Uh, it sort of prepares you how to react and stay positive and stay cheerful. So beautiful. Thank you, Brother Vincent. I hope everyone is feeling encouraged. It For me, it's just like, oh, food. It's amazing. So wonderful. Sister Nadine, how did how has Legion of Mary impacted your life? Um, the Legion of Mary uh, taught me discipline, which I truly struggled with very much before. Um, the Legion of Mary grounded me. It brought consistency into my life. It gave me a deeper understanding of my faith through the spiritual guidance of our members and our spiritual, our spiritual director who joins our meetings. Um, prayer is truly the key to the health and vitality of our relationship with God. And I never really took prayer so seriously before joining the Legion of Mary. I kind of took it for granted and mostly only did it when I needed something, shamefully so. But through the Legion of Mary, my focus and my gaze shifted much more clearly, both internally and externally towards Christ. And it helped me better connect with the trust in the living God, with my trust in the living God. Um, being grounded is also an act of faith. Our submission to it is an act of trust. And there's no one that I think I can speak for all of us when I say there's no one that we can ever trust more than we trust him. And Jesus modeled that, the significance of prayer for us in his um, in his life, we see we hear that throughout the gospel. Jesus often went off to be alone and to pray in quiet places. He did it prior to choosing his twelve disciples. He did it prior to commencing his public ministry. He did it for the forty days while fasting, while being tempted by Satan. So Jesus was the perfect example for us to live a prayerful life and to discern our will he also taught us how to give ourselves completely to god to give our trust completely to god even when it may seem like we can't understand what's what's in front of us um this i also take uh, mother mary also gave me she gave herself to our lord through prayer let let it be done according to your will even when she couldn't understand herself, she still had full trust and faith in God. And that's the example I try to live by. Um, I think prayer is God's design. And even though he already knows everything, he already knows what we want. He already knows what we need. He already knows what we're crying about, what we're hurting about, what we're happy about. He still wants us to go to him. He still wants us to pray. He still wants us to ask. He still wants us to reach out, not to forget him, to, to give him that respect, to give him that love as any parent would. 
and he's the parent of all parents. So for us to go to him and to give him that honor and that respect, it just goes a, a great way, a great deal. So I feel like it is, at, um, I feel like the Legion of Mary truly taught me how to ground myself in prayer. And it brought me a lot closer to God and a lot closer to Mother Mary. Well, now we all know why Sister Nadine is the president. <laughs> That was beautiful, Sister Nadine. So we're going to take a quick, short break. When we come back, we're going to resume with Sister Mia's testimony. Uh, and then we're going to end up encouraging our listeners of how you can become a legionnaire and be part of the Legion of Mary. Okay, so hang on. Maybe just go get a cup of coffee quickly or a cup of tea or something and come back and join us as we resume our beautiful program today on the Legion of Mary uh, with Brother Vincent, with Sister Nadine and Sister Mia, who will now will then end our programming uh, with her testimony. And I sincerely hope that you uh, spread the news, everyone. Tell your friends this is this is such an important uh, an important place to be today. God bless and see you soon. Okay, hang on. You are listening to Radio Maria Canada. We now continue with the program Beyond the Pages. Here once again is our host, Christina Doyle. Well, thank you everyone for coming back and joining us here today as we're talking about the Legion of Mary. We had the president of our chapter here, Sister Nadine Dagger. We had Brother Vincent Yuson, and uh, we thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to close up our program today with a very powerful testimony by Sister Mia Watamina. And uh, let me tell you that every one of our guests today have a very powerful testimony. They can all, they've all given you reasons as to why they joined and how it's impacted their lives and how it can impact your life as well. So without further ado, Sister Mia, you've been waiting for so long throughout the entire program. Thank you for your patience. It's so good to have you on board. Sister Mia, please share with all of us how you became a legionnaire and what was what happened? Well, how did you become one? And why are you a legionnaire? Okay, thank you, Sister Christina. Uh, I have come from a family that had no religion or faith in anything. So when I was around six months of age, I was very sick. And I had contracted something so serious that I was actually dying. So through the grace of God, I end up in a Catholic hospital. They could see how I was dying and right then, and there were, they baptized me and gave me the sacrament for the sick, right? So that's how I became a Catholic. So I guess everything happened for a reason. That's right. So later, as a teenager, I joined the Legion of Mary in Indonesia. I still didn't quite understand my faith and how important the Legion of Mary was going to be in my life. So I just followed my good friend who suggested I join and I was active member as a junior legionary for two years. So many years later, I got married and one day, I bought a house before I even sold mine. And I thought, you know, I could break even because the house price went up so high. And, but I thought for, for one and a half years, I could break even, but that's not the things. So I was so worried about the mortgage and I will end up with a bigger house. Yeah. So, well, unfortunately, housing prices started to go down very quickly and it became extremely difficult to sell mine. So, can you imagine the stress of the possibility of owning two homes? Yeah, <laughs> that's a scary thought. Yes, that's scary. But somehow, that's why it made me pray. 
I prayed so hard to Mother Mary to help me. So a strange thing happened one night. I had this dream that I was kneeling in a church close to the right wall. And suddenly behind me, a group of people all wearing white robes, they were walking towards me. And I could see that Jesus was one of them, but I didn't see this face. But I knew it was Jesus. So they stopped behind me and Jesus asked me this question, who is Jesus? So I answered Jesus, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then I quickly asked Jesus, please, Jesus, help me sell my house. And he agreed like that. Wow. He nodded his head. Yes. So after that, I woke up and I was worried. Oh, no. Why when Jesus asked me who is Jesus? And I said the wrong answer. So I woke up my husband at 4 a.m. in the morning. I know it's hard to wake him up because wake him up if it's not something really important because he, it's hard for him to go back to sleep. So my husband said, well, it's only a dream, you know, it's not your fault. So I was worried because I was still worried that morning. I asked my friends, I called my friend about it, who were devoted Catholics, and I knew they would have the right answer. So someone told me, remember when you go to mass during consecration, when the priest lift the host and said, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. So I felt my heart that Jesus knows that I didn't know much about him or my faith. So now when I think back of this dream, I think of St. Bernadette of Lourdes, when she asked Mother Mary who she is. She of course replied, I am the Immaculate Conception. Like, uh, yeah, she is the, the Immaculate Conception who even Bernadette didn't know what it means. So, God knows everything in our life. What we didn't know, what we knew. So I know Jesus is alive. And working on each of us. So our choices, our decisions, our outcomes, and especially, he knows us. So after my dream, our house sold in two weeks. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the buyer, she tripped and fell in our driveway after she oh. gave it. Oh, my goodness. Pound payment. Oh. <laughs> so, so she changed her mind. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you know Chinese. When she fell, she thinks it's a bad luck, right? All right. <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of kind of scary to think that you're dream home and then you fall and yeah. hurt yourself. Maybe I shouldn't be buying this. <laughs> So I, I was crying and I asked Jesus, why where is cancel, Jesus? You said you're going to sell my house, but why is cancel? But anyway, after two weeks, mm -hmm. it was sold again. And you know what happened? After she gave the down payment, the second buyer, she fell again. She oh. tripped again. So I said, what happened? But luckily, she has a teenager who really likes my house. So oh. she bought my house 13000 over Oh the my. price from the first one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Praise God. It's a happy ending. <laughs> I know. So after I sold my house, of course, I have to pack my stuff. So I was in the basement and I found a dusty Bible because I, I didn't read the Bible. So I found a thick Bible and I didn't even know what's the difference between New and Old Testament. But I was asking myself, is it in the Bible what Jesus told me that she is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? 
And then I open like this, and I open a couple pages, and I was shocked. Yes, the headline, John the Baptist. I think it's John 1st, 29. And it says, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's how John introduced Jesus. Sister Mia, when, when I was reading your testimony and you had said that you didn't grow up with any kind of faith, that you didn't read the Bible that was never opened, and then for you to utter those words from a dream that you had seen our Lord Jesus, and then to open the Bible to find the exact scripture that exactly what you had said is... And um, I could just, it's unbelievable. It's, you know, it, that is divine intervention. That is God moving and moving in your life. Our blessed mother is so in, in your life, Sister Mia. Uh, yes. I'm sorry, keep going. I won't interrupt That's you. Okay. Just yeah. found it amazing. So, uh, yeah, I got a goosebump in the people. <laughs> when I was by myself, right? <laughs> So the words I had spoken, a young girl who never knew about the Catholic faith, never opened the Bible, only went to church once in a while. So uttering the word of Jesus, Mother Mary reaches out to each of us in her own way. And uh, she told me that she had a dream Oh, no, this is another story. Like, you know, uh, after a while, I went to church. You know, I start to go to church uh, once a week, maybe, and start to practicing my faith. Yeah, Jesus is real there. You know, it's just not a myth. That's what I thought. So one day, a nun, that uh, friend of my friend, I didn't really know this nun, but because he is a friend of friend, one day she called me. She said, Mia, you know, I guess you know me. We met once. And yeah, Sister Christina, yes, her name is Sister Christina. I was hesitant to call you, but my friend in the conference told me because I had a dream of you three days in a row. I said, yes, what happened, sister? She said, the first day, she saw me in a dream that I was sitting in a corner and I was crying. So the second day, she said, she saw me. I was crying and Mother Mary was consoling me. Mother Mary consoled me like behind me. And then the third day of her dream, the nun told me that she saw me walking in the dark and it's like a not even a path, it's a very dark alley in a hard place for, you know, for something really difficult. So that time after she told me, I said, oh yeah, you know, I thought it was just a dream. I didn't really pay attention. Right. But I, one day I decided to open a restaurant. After two years that she called me, the nun, I decided to open a restaurant for my son. So the business didn't, was not really good at all. So I felt like it was my purgatory then. So my husband and I spent over 400,000 in renovation and each month we kept losing about 6,000 per month. And I still have to struggling, working, cooking, like, uh, you know, the stress. And mm -hmm. for a good while, I really thought God is punishing me. I felt I was, yeah, I told you I was in purgatory. Purgatory, right. Yes, purgatory. Like in a, yeah. I trapped in this deep pit and I know. no way out. So it's, as it happened, the restaurant was about less than five minutes away from a church called uh, St. Joseph the Worker. And that church has a, at least not 24 hours, but it's like a perpetual adoration every day. So, because I, I was so stressful in the afternoon, sometimes I went to that church in the chapel and I cried and I, you know, I prayed to Jesus in front of the Blessed Sacrament. 
because before when I have to go, when I told myself to go to the blessed sacrament, I said, oh, I have better things to do. Why I spend an hour right. wasting my time? Even though I went to church every day, daily mass, but still to go to the blessed sacrament, it was kind of like I was too busy with right. other things. So, so perpetual uh, adoration in the afternoon, that's how I, you know, I crying, I'm praying, but I didn't know how God is going to help me out because I thought, oh, I signed up for 10 years. You, you signed up, you mean the, the contract was for 10 years? 10 years. You were locked in for 10 years? 10 years, and I have to struggle. I thought I was, I felt like a piece of big stone in my heart. There was no way out, right? So, uh, but you know, one day the landlord called me. He said, he asked me, where is the contract? I said, I don't know. I didn't sign the contract. My husband did. But he found out with, that we didn't sign the contract. It was only an offer. Oh, my my gosh. God knew what's going to happen. Wow. Yeah, I think he knew what's going to happen. Yeah. And then, no contract. And then he said, this has never happened in my history as a landlord. He my owned God. malls. He owned plaza. He owned so many property. He has 100 employees working for him. How could this happen? Somebody renovated oh. the, the store and didn't have a contract? That's impossible, is it? But it happened. So oh I said, so what now? You know, can I walk free and sell my equipment? He said, well, what can I do? So I sold everything. I got 50% you know, back from my equipment. And in two, three weeks, I was walking free. Like Praise a God. Out from the pit. That's amazing. What a story. What a testimony. My gosh. That is so scary, Sister Mia, yeah. to think uh, to be locked in and then to be told that you. And then after a while, I was still thinking, oh, no, I lost 400000 know, And I complained to my son. You know, what can I do, son? I, we lost 400000 I don't know. Maybe my son with the Holy Spirit or something, he said, mommy, you know, with 400000 you cannot take it when you die. What a wise son. Yes, but you know now, look, you go to adoration every day. I think that's remind me of the nun's dream. Mother Mary took me to a hard way, like with this restaurant, to go to a place, which is the adoration place, chapel. So sometimes I told my friend, you know, go to adoration. Because I spent five hundred. For 500,000 to, to make me the happy to go to adoration. Right. But I think it's worth it. Right. Yeah, but that's how I can advise somebody who doesn't want to go to adoration. So this is from this experience, I learned through my faith that when we surrender, Consecrate ourselves to Mother Mary and trust her with all your heart. She will take you in closer to her and to Jesus. So, so beautiful. Yeah, to be close to Mother Mary when we are dying, she will be like our mother who take care of us just like that when we were born. Thank you, Sister Mia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Let's, I, it, today was such a powerful, beautiful uh, exposition of our Legion of Mary. God bless us all. God bless the Legion of Mary. May everyone that hears, may their ears and hearts be open. And so with the closing, I, I will sign off because of time. I will invite Sister Nadine to uh, give us our last prayer and just to let you know i'm prefacing it that it is from our legion of mary uh tessera tessera that you'll see and it's at the back of each of uh, the prayer is there so i would invite sister nadine 
And I will just say thank you, everyone, for being with me this afternoon. It has been such a blessing. And I have never, never once hesitated or regretted that I have become a legionnaire. So praise God. I'm so glad that you hounded me and found me. And I got to be a part of this amazing, amazing group of uh, Blessed Mother's Warriors. So with that, thank you. God bless you all. Sister Nadine, over to you. Thank you, sister. We're blessed to have you too. This is one of my, my absolute favorite prayers. And like sister Christina said, this is one of the prayers that we do daily with the Legion of Mary. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Confer, O Lord, on us who serve beneath the standards of Mary, the fullness of faith in you and trust in her, to which it is given to conquer the world. Grant us a lively faith animated by charity, which will enable us to perform all of our actions from the motive of pure love of you and ever to see you and serve you in our neighbor, a faith firm and immovable as a rock through which we shall rest tranquil and steadfast amid the crosses, toils, and disappointments of life, a courageous faith which will inspire us to undertake and carry out without hesitation great things for your glory and for the salvation of souls a faith which will be our legion's pillar of fire to lead us forth united, to kindle everywhere the fires of divine love, to enlighten those who are in the darkness and in the shadow of death, to inflame those who are lukewarm, to bring back life to those who are dead in sin and which will guide our own feet in the way of peace so that the battle of life over, our legion may reassemble without the loss of anyone in the kingdom of your love and glory. Amen. Amen. May the souls of our departed legionaries and the souls of all the faithfully departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, just please check. Is it the legion of Mary.com? Mm -hmm. That if they want to find oh, further. Yeah. If Mary. they want to join uh, the legion of Mary, you can uh, either reach out to the nearest Catholic parish around you and ask them if they have a legion of mary in the church or you can even uh, contact toronto sonatas and the email address is toronto.senatus at gmail.com and they'll help connect you with the nearest parish that has the legion of mary closest to you fantastic god bless Thanks, everyone, for joining us this afternoon here on Beyond the Pages. We've been listening to everyone regarding Sister Nadine, Sister Mia, Brother Vincent on the Legion of Mary. I hope you join us and become a blessed mother warrior. You will not regret it. God bless. You have been listening to Beyond the Pages, hosted by Christina Doyle, here on Radio Maria Canada, 96.9.